Welcome, friends. We are back with another Life with Dr. McDougall. And uh, it's always nice to see all of you logging in. I'm Gustavo Tolosa, and I'm the webinar host. And today we have the one and only Dr. McDougall. And uh, excited to hear what he has to say today. I think he's going to be talking about his newsletter and about um, Alzheimer's disease and taking questions. So here we go with an excitement, with an exciting webinar. And I want to welcome you, Dr. McDougall. How are things going in Santa Rosa? I think pretty crazy, busy. <laughs> oh, you know, it actually life is really good. So okay. I, okay. I, I couldn't complain. And again, you know, I, it seems like last Thursday we talked about this and many Thursdays, the grandkids are coming over for a swim. This <laughs> And when you, when you say the one and only Dr. McDougall, fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, just to just to brag a little bit, I have three oh, children, yeah. and two of them are doctors. So one's a PhD in chemistry, the other happens to be on the faculty of Oregon Health and Science University, the medical school in Portland, as a medical doctor, a board certified internist. But just to add that in there, you know, the one and only Dr. McDougall. I I keep telling the family, I'm the one and only Dr. McDougall. You know, uh, take advantage of me, you know, to, to, to get me to share That's as right. I can with you. There are lots of other people who have opinions on good diets and health and and so on. And, you know, I, I hear their opinions, not that I respect them. Some of them I do, but not very many. But mm -hmm. anyway, you know, I, I'm, the, you know, as, uh, as uh, some of our McDougal program employees have suggested, you know, you ought to get somebody to to do more of your work, like, uh, you know, more of your webinars and write your newsletters. And I said, I can't. I said, nobody has the knowledge and the point no. of views that I have. And so, you know, once I'm not able to do the newsletters and the, uh, the other things, uh, I don't want anybody to no. take my place. I want them to leave my stuff alone. Right. Leave I my, understand you. I leave alone. my stuff alone. <laughs> <laughs> you can make comments on it. You can add what you want to it. But excuse me, I did it right the first time. And this is your life. Uh, you know, your, your life's a project. I mean, this is your life. You've built this. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, that's it. Gets a little personal <laughs> on occasion. It does get personal. People suggest, well, maybe we should get somebody to help you and to do more. Well, for who you. do you have in mind? <laughs> Well, you know, they, they actually have the yes. people out there, but excuse me, there is only one and only, as you said, Dr. McDougall, right, right or wrong, like me or don't like me, uh, <laughs> and don't expect somebody to come in and uh, uh, take my place. And if they try, just say, that's not Dr. McDougall. I know what he said. I've got it here in all his writings and books. That's right. and, and I saw him do it on the various lectures he gave, which are free on the on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you got me off that person. All right. <laughs> well, we were going to talk today about uh, Alzheimer's disease. And uh, the reason, uh, the reason is, is this has been a topic of discussion from people from the uh, high carbohydrate plant based group of people that I deal with and also from our uh, uh, uninformed, dangerous, uh, opponents that promote low carb diets. Uh, they're all talking about Alzheimer's disease this day and giving their various hypotheses on what causes it and uh, what you should do about it. And, you know, from my viewpoint, they're all missing it and it shouldn't be missed. I originally wrote about this in uh, my June 2004 newsletter, which I think we may have mentioned last week or hopefully somebody suggested you read it before today's discussion. It's June 2004, and it's called Alzheimer's disease can be safely prevented and treated now. See, that's 2004. That would be 13 years ago. And uh, I don't know. I, 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 some people have, have read it, I know, and some have gotten back to me. And I started out the newsletter by discussing the most famous Alzheimer's patient uh, in the world, and that's... Uh, Ronald Reagan, he died of or with Alzheimer's, complications of Alzheimer's. He died of old age and many other things. Had colon cancer, had lots of other problems related to the American diet. Nancy had 
breast cancer. So they were real Americans, let me say. But I started out with him just to kind of focus the attention on uh, on this disease. And, and then I, I discussed in here some of the causes. And there are, as I say, many discussions, people who are from the uh, uh, plant food based and the animal food based and no food based uh, points of view. And you can find lots of opinions out there, but none as strong as the one that I presented in 2004 and that is still being presented today. And that is, and hear me clearly, ladies and gentlemen, aluminum, the metal aluminum poisoning causes Alzheimer's disease, period. Now there are other factors like genetics, but there's only a, a, a small correlation in twin studies. So genetics isn't very much. And there may be other minerals involved such as iron and copper, they've been suggested. Yeah, maybe, maybe at some level, maybe some variants. And uh, the rich Western diet has been suggested and that's a diet high in cholesterol, high in fat, you know, the typical meat-laden, dairy-laden diet. And all those, I think, deserve uh, some attention, some look over. But I think when you're done, I'm sure when you're done, if you do a thorough investigation, you'll come to the same conclusion I have, and that is aluminum poisoning. That's what it's all about. So uh, I do did an update of this uh, article, this 2004 article, I did an update, uh, which is finished and hopefully will be published tomorrow uh, on aluminum and Alzheimer's disease. And uh, a, few th a few things have been added to the discussion. Back then, I remember, in fact, let me take you way back. When I wrote the book, The McDougall Program, 12 Days to Dynamic Health, my editor at uh, Penguin Putnam, she told me, that you cannot include this section on Alzheimer's disease in the book because it's just been disproven. It's not true that Alzheimer's is caused by aluminum. Now that was probably well, sometime in the early nineties. And uh, I had access to the internet. I was one of the early subscribers and had access to the National Library of Medicine. And so I went to the National Library of Medicine and I put in the search terms. And I encourage you to do this, right? Today, the search terms at the National uh, National Library of Medicine, which is www.pubmed.gov. And I put in the search terms, aluminum and Alzheimer's disease, and about 700 articles came up and I sent the, uh, the link to my editor. And it, it the material as I wrote it, for the book, The McDougall Program, which is almost at least 20 years ago, was published as I wrote it because the evidence is clear. Now, if you search it, I just searched those terms and I found uh, over a thousand articles and you can read them all. Almost all of them support the connection between aluminum poisoning and Alzheimer's disease, but you give it a read through. And uh, when somebody like the Aluminum Association which I talk about in the next newsletter, when somebody like the Aluminum Association says there's no evidence that aluminum causes Alzheimer's. You say, what about these thousand articles? Well, what well, are they and, going to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, what I would say is go look at the dairy industry, the meat right. industry. They have their spin doctors too. Right. So anyway, uh, the whole history of Alzheimer's development I went through in the newsletter comes out in two days. But in this one, I talk about uh, a couple of possibilities. And it was inspired by a Time Magazine article that must have been published sometime around June 2004 with a cover of Alzheimer's disease uh, on, on the Time Magazine. And then when you read the article, it mentioned nothing about aluminum, but it did mention the Western diet. So this is uh, probably 14, 15 years ago. And mentioning the Western diet is being involved. And so I looked at it uh, from that point of view uh, and wrote about the Western diet being involved in the June 2004 newsletter. And some of the things I noted is that worldwide, the incidence of Alzheimer's parallels the incidence of heart disease and other diseases of rich foods. 
uh, I wrote uh, that population studies show high fat, you know, high meat, high dairy diets have more Alzheimer's disease. Uh, people with atherosclerosis have a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. And uh, actually, there's a, a couple articles that show that taking statins, which lower cholesterol, uh, is beneficial in terms of Alzheimer's disease. Of course, statins have been claimed to be beneficial for everything and should be put in the drinking water. They're so good for you. Uh, anyway, and Alzheimer's disease is also described as a disease with plaques. Uh, one of the characteristic, we call them pathognomonic, which means you see the lesion, you identify the disease. And uh, two path pathognomonic lesions that you see on microscopic examination of the brain are neurofibular, neurofibular uh, tangles and uh, also senile plaques are seen when you look there. Well, plaques, see, plaques, people who talk about plaques, you know, they get their mind confused around plaques in the arteries and plaques in the brain and think they're the same. And, you know, that's part of the confusion. Uh, plaques just mean one thing to people. Un, un, uncare, un, people who are not careful and really don't understand. Anyway, uh, so there's some of the evidence that uh, the Western diet causes Alzheimer's. And, and I think the Western diet is involved. You know, this is aluminum poisoning. But aluminum, the metal, uh, is found in the Earth's crust in uh, complex forms non-absorbable forms of aluminum, uh, oxalates, and other non-absorbable forms, silicates, uh, non-absorbable forms. And uh, they get into plants as non-absorbable compounds, non-absorbable, like tea, for example, has very high levels of aluminum in it, but it's all complex with a uh, uh, another molecule, another uh, element to produce a non-absorbable aluminum compound. And uh, as a result, aluminum is naturally not part of our bodies and not part of the animal kingdom. It's supposed to be in the dirt, in the clay, in the mud. Yeah. And it used to be uh, until the late 1800s, we started finding ways to process aluminum uh, into products, uh, into forms that are absorbable, such as aluminum citrate, very absorbable. And by the way, when you buy your antacids in the store, there are aluminum citrate antacids. Don't buy them because the citrate or citrate of any form increases the absorption of aluminum. So the Western diet may be involved in the sense that you have this aluminum in the environment that should be non-absorbable, an industry has made it into absorbable compounds, and it gets into the body through the nose, the lungs, and the gastrointestinal tract. Well, the gastrointestinal tract uh, forms a mucus, which actually prevents the absorption of aluminum, 99% of it, it prevents. So uh, there are also other factors, like the ability to remove aluminum from the body, uh, you know, the permeability of the gut, the health of the gut which would be influenced by a good diet. So I'm not trying to suggest, in fact, I'd like to suggest otherwise, that a good diet is important in preventing the aluminum getting into your body and staying into your body and accumulating into your body and uh, eventually leading to Alzheimer's disease. So you wanna uh, consider the foundation of good health also in this, in your efforts to avoid aluminum poisoning. Well, sources of aluminum poison, I'll just get into a, a couple of them. Um, eating and drinking, drinking waters, uh, uh, food additives are full of uh, absorbable aluminum, uh, aerosol sprays that you spray in your armpits to stop the perspiration all contain aluminum compounds. Uh, it's the aluminum compounds that stop the sweat. Uh, so every morning people get up and they go, Psst, and it goes right into their nose. Uh, that may be why some of the most severe cases of Alzheimer's have uh, some of the greatest numbers of uh, pathognomonic or uh, lesions 
that uh, are seen classic with Alzheimer's disease in the uh, olfactory lobes of the brain and through the system that uh, the olfactory lobes lead into in the brain. Uh, in those various areas of the brain that connect with the olfactory lobe of the brain, in those areas of the brain, you have the greatest evidence of the Alzheimer's disease. In other words, these lesions, neurofibular tangles, and senile plaques. Anyway, so you eat it, some is absorbed, you breathe it, it's absorbed, and it is also absorbed through your skin. Those of you who are thinking that, well, I just use a roll-on aluminum containing. Now, the absorption isn't as much as breathing it, but it is absorbed through the skin. So anyway, uh, the next section of this newsletter, June 2004, goes into uh, the evidence that I presented at that time, which was, by the way, a good share of the evidence that is uh, that is really important. Uh, it discusses the specific evidence on aluminum and Alzheimer's disease, and it goes into a whole bunch of ways that you should know that aluminum causes Alzheimer's. And we'll talk about those next week, some of that evidence, particularly two very important studies, one done in 1980, published in Science, showing that the central core of, uh, of neuro neurofibular tangles and senile plaques uh, contain aluminum. You can see it under an electron microscope. That's pretty important. That was published in Science in 1980. We'll talk about that a little more next week after you have a chance to read the newsletter. And also, it was just reported in 2017, uh, a study that shows a direct connection between the amount of aluminum in somebody's body and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, in other words, people with uh, no aluminum or little aluminum in their body have uh, <clears throat> almost no Alzheimer's disease. And as you move up in the uh, onset as far as age and severity, you see more aluminum until you get to the extreme, which is what this article was published about, which we're going to talk about next week, is a familial Alzheimer's disease, which is early onset Alzheimer's, which may come as early as 30 years old. And I saw one reference as early as 15 years old. And uh, it's, of course, very progressive and deadly. Uh, they, these people have the highest aluminum content of any people studied. So this direct correlation between body content aluminum and uh, Alzheimer's is a classic uh, paper. Those are probably the two most important papers out of the more than 1,000 that you can read. Anyway, I give you lots of references uh, in the 2004 newsletter and in the, uh, <clears throat> the one that I'm going to publish uh, that I've already written that will be out in a day or two. And you can you can read over those and get some questions. And and uh, I think you'll be convinced that you should not be uh, in personal contact with the most toxic brain toxic metal on Earth, which is aluminum. And it happens to be the third most common element on Earth after oxygen and silicone. Yeah, well. And uh, the ways you're going to prevent it is uh, identifying aluminum in your environment and staying away from it. I'm going to also talk to you about some treatments uh, for removing aluminum from the body in the next newsletter. And they're yeah. introduced in 2004. So anyway, I think I hope that stimulated your interest to the point where you'll read the 2004, June 2004 newsletter. And the one that comes out uh, day after tomorrow, probably day after tomorrow, you'll take the time to read that. Uh, challenge me. You know, tell me otherwise. Excuse me, if you're missing the aluminum connection, maybe you have Alzheimer's disease already. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to say anything nasty, but you just ain't working on all cylinders. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what, that's what I know. <clears throat> Okay. Very, well, what do you, what so you Dr. Do you do, do you recommend that then we all be careful and, and and read labels to make sure that whatever it is we buy does not have aluminum? Okay. You, 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 aluminum should be identified on the label, but it's not in many cases. Alum, right. A L U M, is one word used. There are others used uh, to uh, <clears throat> hide or they just don't identify the aluminum. There's mm. a list of uh, high aluminum. 
uh, products in the 2004 newsletter. There are also aluminum cans that we use and pots and pans. And uh, we, I will offer some suggestions mm-hmm. on what to do instead of that. Infant formulas. Oh, I know. Very yes. High, yes. Very high content of aluminum. And that, that's in toothpaste happen too as well? Oh, yeah. To- toothpaste, de- even deodorants do. Oh, deodorants are different. famous for having it. I mean, it's just that we don't realize it, but it's everywhere and... Um, you just have to be oh, it's careful. A, it's, a, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And, uh, well, so, anyway, but, but what you were saying though is that if the form is in, uh, if we're, how can I say, if it's if a plant has absorbed it from the ground, like tea leaves, let's say, then that's okay. Right. It's if we're saying well, about that's natural. That's natural. I mean, that's, right. that's that's the way it is, and it absorbs and uh, uh, accumulates. Aluminum that is complexed with other elements that make it non-absorbable mm-hmm. for the human gut, right. and so they're safe. Even though they'll say, you know, tea leaves have, you know, some of the highest content of aluminum around. But yeah, but you know, it's uh, it's uh, in a form that the gut can't absorb. So there's right. no association between Alzheimer's disease and tea drinking when you eat the plants they're still in the non-absorbable form, the aluminum right. compounds are. But industry takes and changes them into readily absorbable forms or you know, relatively, relative, relatively right. more right. absorbable forms so that people accumulate huge amounts of aluminum. And in the human body or no animal is supposed to contain aluminum. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, it's a non-nutrient. It's a... Uh, uh, outside environmental chemical that's supposed to stay outside the body, but these days it doesn't. And the right. result is uh, 44 million cases of Alzheimer's I disease know. these days. And in, 19, in 1926, I believe there were only 33 cases reported. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first case was reported in 1901. And so Alzheimer's was virtually unknown. Uh, until World War II. And during World War II, of course, we produced lots of things like uh, nerve gases right. and all kinds of, I mean, industry really took off during World War II. And since then, uh, it's uh, come to the point where there are 44 million cases now worldwide in 2000, you know, 2015. Mm-hmm. And they predict by 2040, there'll be 81 million cases if we see it 2040. That's right. Yeah. Dr. McDougall, can someone do anything? Someone asked if you, uh, to get rid of if we have accumulated aluminum. Yes, or... yes, you can. And uh, I was going to save that for next week, but I oh, okay, uh, well, see it. But that's okay. I'll just I'll give you a hint. I'll give you some discussion. In the 2004 newsletter, is discussed desferoxamine, which is a chelating agent mm-hmm. with a particular affinity for aluminum. And that was used uh, in the 19, it started in, she was, well, uh, in the 80s or in the early 90s. They started using it as an IM injection twice a day, five days a week. And they observed patients for two years and found that those who got the dysphroxamine uh, had a, a depletion of aluminum in their body and a uh, half the uh, chance of progressing with Alzheimer's disease. But desferoxamine, you can buy it. If you look up the internet, you can buy it. It's an intermuscular injection. There's one company that sells it over the internet. Not that I'm recommending you do, but uh, it is it is available. And uh, you'd have to find some physician right. interested. You have to read more detail about the therapy, and et cetera. Uh, and those links are in the 2004 newsletter and will again appear in the new newsletter. And then there's one other one other approach that, as far as I know, is safe. It's uh, become uh, popular in the press in the 2017s. It's a treatment uh, uh, done, invented by a researcher in England, the United Kingdom. And it is simple, and you can buy it over the counter. As far as I know, it's as safe as can be. And that's all I'm going to tell you until next time you get the okay. newsletter. Okay, well, that's very you good. Wanna, to make you want to consider back. you want to consider doing this this uh, other simple thing, and you know it's 
the evidence is that it, it removes aluminum from the body. It may slow the progression. There's tiny evidence that may slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. It's safe, non-toxic, mm -hmm. cheap. And uh, okay. in two days when you read the newsletter, you'll find out what it is. Oh, we yeah. look forward to that. Dr. McDougall, so is, is it... But don't eat aluminum. Don't get... Just get it out of your environment. Just get it out. Yes. Well, it's it may not be easy for some people because we are surrounded by things. So we just have to start looking at everything we use well, every, in everyday life. Well, a starch-based diet mm -hmm. we're based around sweet potatoes, potatoes, rice, right. corn. But the aluminum in the starch is complex and is not absorbable. Exactly. Uh, if you cook in uh, non-aluminum pots and pans, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about next mm -hmm. week, you know, you're not going to get aluminum. If you don't use uh, aluminum containing hygiene products, you right. just need to stay away from the stuff uh, from now on. And uh, you may consider uh, the suggestion that I uh, will present in the newsletter that comes out. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I, anyway, it's cheap, no. safe, non-toxic, okay. and uh, makes sense. It fits into the mechanism of the cause of Alzheimer's disease, which is aluminum poisoning, aluminum poisoning, aluminum. You know, I first talked about this. I just mentioned what I'm thinking about. On the Ray Brim show, uh, this was a big t uh, radio show like Larry King that was broadcast out of Los Angeles. In the 1980s, I, I talked about 1980s. I talked about this on a show that was broadcast coast to coast, Ray Brim. And uh, the response I got was a letter from the Alzheimer's Association or some Alzheimer's industry spokesperson and told me that this was all a bunch of baloney. Mm -hmm. Not the right term. We, we, we we're trying to fix some easy term. Uh, anyways, it was, it was, they said, I, what I said was untrue and that I should stop saying it. And, uh, they, you know, I think they were, if they thought they could do it, they were going to come after me legally. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't. And the same thing is happening today with uh, uh, this United Kingdom researcher that <clears throat> I talked about who's heavily published. He must, I don't know, I guess have 100 papers in the literature on, uh, on all aluminum causing Alzheimer's. A really, really good work this man has done. Uh, he has, he's, he identified that he was, uh, confronted by the aluminum industry. Mm -hmm. Anybody that stands up against these industries used to be confronted. Uh, they've discovered the dairy, the meat, the egg industry that public confrontation is not in their best interest no. because it makes the topic uh, available or right. of interest to the public. Right. And so they just shut their mouths and stuff the cash in their pockets. Mm -hmm. and buyer beware. And that's just right. the way it is. And because we live in a free country with a uh, freedom of information, with, you know, free of freedom from uh, regulation. And so as a result, you know, we're free, but we're also free to get poisoned by the food industries and hurt by other industries. Uh, there's a price to being free. And there's a, a value in some regulation. I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. Yeah. yeah. Well, many people here are having the question of what about the cans where food comes in and where drinks yeah. come in, beer cans or Coke cans? Or... Definitely. Definitely. They, they all deliver aluminum that is absorbable in the body. And in the 2004 newsletter, I believe, is a actual um, article that looked at the different kinds of sodas, colas, different kinds of soft drinks in aluminum cans to see which mm -hmm. absorb more aluminum from the can material than the other and mm -hmm. uh, so you you know if you if you want to get real picky about this uh, you can figure out which of the cans uh which of the contents of the cans is more aluminum uh releasing than the other and you can drink this cola as opposed to just stay away from this just stuff. stay away yeah yeah it's and, and these days they also health 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 food cans they use uh lining material now what comes to mind is some kind of shellac but so they use a, a lining material to protect uh, the food product from uh, the uh, aluminum right. metal and lead right. that used to be used 
but aluminum, of course, is still used in cans on all cans. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's, we, it's, it's not that it's not a great metal and a great invention. Right. But you don't want to eat it and breathe it. It's not made to be inside our bodies. Yeah. Well, but I mean, we do eat. Yeah, a lot of us eat beans and many other vegetables that come in cans. Yeah. So you have to be careful, you know, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't know what to tell you, except uh, maybe the label says uh, coated with shellac or coated with, uh, yeah. you know, coated with something to protect you. Now, bottles wouldn't have aluminum if you buy mm -hmm. glass bottles. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you need to be careful of these yeah. cans and pans and pots and uh, utensils you use. You They should not be made aluminum. I... <laughs> Again, as I talk to you, you know, my my seventy year old brain, it sometimes remembers things <laughs> that haven't come up in decades. But I remember, I must I must have been uh, seven eight years old, maybe yeah, about that age. A pots and pan salesman came to our home, right, and tried to sell my mom and dad his new aluminum or new stainless steel pots and pans or whatever. Right on aluminum material. And the demo that he did to an eight-year-old child is to have me watch the aluminum pans dissolve into the liquid <laughs> that they were cooking. Right, and I'll, right. I'll never forget that. I mean, good grief. Uh, it was convincing. And I think my parents actually bought them, even though they were very low-income people. Mm -hmm. They actually went and bought the uh, the uh, non-aluminum pots and pans. Yeah. Right. It's a big right. deal. It it is. It is. Wow. Well, I know that some people do the, buy cans because of the it's it's time. Uh, it's a time issue. I I cook my own beans, but not everybody has the time. So sometimes it's a convenience, but we have to make it sure is. that it's not going to cost. And, and, and of course, you you know when you go to out, eat out. You now I tell you how Mary and I tell you how to eat out in mm -hmm. Mexican right. and Chinese restaurants. If you had the extra uh, criterion that they must be cooked in aluminum-free pots and pans, you're not going to be eating out. Right. Uh, so, right. But, but there are some obvious things that you can do once you understand the uh, neuro, the brain toxicity of mm -hmm. this metal. You you can take some effort to stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a nutrient. There's no biologic need for it. It's never supposed to be in animals. <laughs> right. So aluminum is a, um, uh, well, I had the word in my head. Oh, and, uh, uh, um, mineral. Metal. Kind of mineral. Yeah. yeah, they call it a me mineral yeah. element. It's actually number 13 on the periodic table, right? Uh, which would give it an atomic weight of 26, I think. That takes mm -hmm. many years. <laughs> and, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a it's a metal, and uh, as I say, it's uh, third the most third the most common element on Earth after silicon and oxygen. Right. Unfortunately, it's all tied up in the Earth's crust. Mm hmm. Or was, not now. Not in our modern <laughs> times. Well, uh, Doctor Montego, how about the 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 odor the that you know when we perspire under the arms it does because some people are asking um would this the odor change according to what we're eating yeah and that's of course been a discussion of ours right when we did the gi series and explained uh -huh. that uh, uh sulfur did, containing right. compounds are what stink and uh, high concentrations of sulfur containing compounds are found in eggs and cheese and meat and fish etc so, yeah, you change your body odor. But, you know, body odor is normal. It's actually attractive. It's there for a reason. <laughs> uh, it's supposed, you're supposed to have body odor, and you're supposed to have perspire. Uh, uh, but remember we talked about last week, we talked about <clears throat> uh, vegetarians, herbivores, cool themselves by perspiring, mm -hmm. whereas carnivores pant. Right. So you perspire, it smells, it it is smells for a reason. That's to identify you as healthy and attractive to people close to you, but it stinks. You stink terrible when you eat foods that make you sick. But you're always going to sweat. You're supposed to sweat. 
You're right. supposed to anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how, anyway, how do you how do you cover up and make yourself smell better? <laughs> I, I, I I'll tell you in uh, in my personal life, I buy deodorants and I read the ingredients, roll-on type of deodorants, and read the ingredients to make sure that they don't contain an antiperspirant, which is aluminum chloride or aluminum carbonate, carbonate I think, but it's aluminum chloride. It, it, aluminum chloride has to be present to stop the sweat glands. So, um, you know, I, I read the label. A, a lot of people get fooled when they go to natural food exhibits and they walk down the aisle and people are uh, selling alum rocks. No, don't use deodorants, but take my this rock which is called alum, mm. and rub it on your armpits, and it'll stop the aluminum, the uh, perspiration. But what is uh, alum? What is an alum rock? It's aluminum. Right. Uh, oh anyway, my. Uh, so you could you could use a cover or a cover up odor uh, found in a deodorant that has a reasonable amount of um, ingredients, and uh, eat good, and hang yeah. out with people who eat good. And wash once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not too know, often, but once in a while. People that smell the same way. Plant-based people, we all smell the same. <laughs> you know, quite, quite, quite uh, this is true. And we talked about this <laughs> in the past. You stink like what you eat. And you know this from garlic and onions. Yeah. and But unfortunately, those sulfur compounds are non-toxic as opposed to sulfur compounds that are found in animal foods which are very toxic, uh, encouraging cancer growth, ball disease, uh, or, you know, it's linked with all kinds of, of issues. So, yeah, you do smell like what you eat. Yeah. And yeah. you want to smell like a dead animal? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, where, where, do, you, where, where do you think that uh, those compounds that you eat go? Yeah. They have to go somewhere. Definitely. Now, the, um, the the body naturally cannot get rid of aluminum, and other than using what you're going to share us with us next week. No, no, no. It, does. It, it, uh, it, it First of all, the body, the intestinal tract, particularly, has a mucous membrane which is uh, anti-aluminum in terms of absorption, and mm -hmm. the kidneys do eliminate aluminum okay. from the kidneys into the urine. It does it naturally. Uh, but you can accelerate that elimination with uh, uh, chelating substances such as desferoxamine, which I think you should only consider under a medical supervision with somebody who knows what they're doing and is willing to learn about desferoxamine. Uh, and uh, there are other things that you can do to accelerate aluminum absorption, uh, accelerate aluminum removal mm -hmm. in the body, and of course uh, the one I'm keeping a secret. So yes. Really <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can accelerate the, uh, the okay. uh, riddance of aluminum from the body, and you can measure that as a lower aluminum content in the tissues, and also probably as a uh, as a reduction in the clinical progression of Alzheimer's. And I say probably because mm -hmm. the evidence is, is quite meager. Why is the evidence meager? Mm -hmm. well, who in the heck's gonna study uh, a, a non-patented compound desferoxamine or uh, a non-patentable simple thing I'm gonna talk about in the newsletter? Right. Um, you know, I mean, who's gonna publicize that? What well, they're gonna publicize when, when industry develops a uh, pill, uh, a safe pill, uh, like statins, you know, like cholesterol and statins. You didn't know about cholesterol before statins came on the market 20 some years ago. Right. Uh, and then everybody learned about statins and everybody learns about diet. I mean, I turn on the TV now, uh, Gustavo, and no, I, I know. almost I know. every commercial is di advertising diabetes yeah. medications which are toxic and useless. Read my January 2017 newsletter. But everybody knows about diabetes. Oh, yes. Because the industry says so. They want you got to create the consumer population, just like with GERD. Mm -hmm. uh, Prilosec came on the market. Uh, you learned about GERD. Why? Because they need to awaken the market. So when a pill comes on the market, 
that is patentable, prescribable. They were going to hear probably, about it. Probably going to cost you three, four hundred dollars a month. That's usually the the, the consumer's right. going rate. That's right. all the, the consumer will bear is about four hundred bucks a month with insurance paying for it on that drug. And they're developing these drugs, by the way. So I'm not talking about uh, a, a dream or hypothesis. This is go ongoing development of uh, uh, oral chelating medications that have removed toxic metals, even iron, which is a necessary nutrient, mm -hmm. and aluminum, and other toxic metals from the body. Uh, if they had a, a, a pill that worked like this desferoxamine does as an intermuscular injection, that they could sell for three, four hundred dollars a month. Believe me, everybody would know about Alzheimer's disease oh, yeah. and aluminum. Yeah. Right. Uh, it would be uh, uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you, you understand? You understand what it's about? It's called big it's, business. It's big business. It, it, nobody's trying to hurt you. It's no. not a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. It's just money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dr. McDougall, what about? Um, have you ever? In your experience, have you ever seen uh, any type of uh, Alzheimer's being reversed mm, or once? Well, I, 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 I personally haven't. Uh, in okay. the papers reported on uh, desferoxamine and this other uh, simple, you keep making me go back to that. Other right. simple uh, way of looking <laughs> for the body, which is going to be a newsletter in 48 hours. Uh, uh, that th those those studies show a slowing of progression of the disease. Again, this is just this is minor data. Right, it's not the data that should be there. The studies that should be done. Yeah, because of financial interests. Hmm. So, uh, as far as uh, slowing or stopping the progression or reversing, I don't think it'll be reversed. I'm pretty sure you can't reverse what has already been lost because this is scar tissue. These these pathognomonic lesions, these neurofibular tangles and senile plaques are uh, end stage disease. I mean, this is not going to, it's like a scar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to come back. That brain tissue is gone mm -hmm. forever. Uh, so you just want to not lose any more brain. Right, right. <laughs> all you got. All you That's got. all you got. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping this will last another 20 years, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm going to take good care of it, and I'm not going to poison it with aluminum. No. And especially, like some people are writing in the chat here, aluminum foil, uh, we don't yeah. want it to heat it. We don't want to touch the food, right? Am I correct? Or well, the, what, the way Mary cooks with aluminum foil, because there are some things that just don't work out well right. in cooking with aluminum foil, like uh, potatoes and onions mm -hmm. on, uh, on a pan. You, know, you put an aluminum sealant, foil sealant around it. So she put something called parchment paper, right, which you can right. buy in any grocery store, in between the food and the aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like we cook with aluminum pots and pans, but they are coated with a relatively safe coating that keeps the food from the aluminum. And we'll talk about that next week. Right, right. Okay. When I say relatively safe, uh, you know, people could argue otherwise. Yeah. You know, cooking glass or ceramic or you know, stainless steel or, you know, whatever you think is safe. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you shouldn't be cooking in aluminum. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. Well, this has been most enlightening. People are, love it. And this is life-saving information. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. Well, it, it should be on the tip of everybody's tongue. It won't be. You know, share it with your friends and family, just like the uh, advisability of a starch-based diet and, you know, every day, I, every day I get an email from somebody who says, oh, how about this new diet by Dr. Mm -hmm. So-and-so? Or I just watched Dr. Oz and there's a, 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 an expert who... A oh, there's always an expert. Well, no, I get the... And then what people do in their emails is they ask me to justify my viewpoint over so-and-so low carb or low lectin or low whatever High, high good fat, et cetera, person. They expect me to personally write them a letter justifying my <laughs> position over theirs. Excuse me, I've written 13 national best selling books. I've written over 130 newsletter articles. I've done 50 webinars. I provided <laughs> tens of thousands of scientific references. And plus, if you just open your eyes, 
It is obvious. <laughs> but what I'm saying is true. So you can ask all you want. You pick your guru. <laughs> you know, there are lots out there to pick. You want to pick one that recommends, uh, as today's newspaper did, our press Democrat, recommends beef wrapped in bacon, then do it. It's your choice. I've done my job. I've told you what I believe to be the truth with 50 years of experience in medicine. Yes. You find somebody else you want to believe. Uh, I bet you can find somebody that uh, will recommend my favorite almost killed me food, pepperoni pizza as a way to solve all problems. I want to hear that guru. Pepperoni pizza. <laughs> Come on. Can you bring him on? We I, do had here. <laughs> I was 70 pounds overweight. I almost died. But that pepperoni pizza was, I want to hear it's good for me. So, yeah. You know, yeah. We, well, like you said before, we all want to hear good news about our bad habits. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, the, the, the truth is there again. PubMed.gov is the website you can go to. Mm -hmm. And our aluminum and Alzheimer's, you'll find over a thousand articles. Read them between now and next week. And you tell me, and there'll be some from the spin doctors from the aluminum industry. Oh, believe me. Oh, yeah. You'll find them. And you'll find other people who have uh, their points of view. They'll say such and such is just a flaw, et cetera. Well, fine. I believe, and I've been researching this for 30 years. Uh, I've kept up with the scientific data. You have, I believe yeah. I believe the, the foundation is aluminum poison. And uh, it doesn't exclude taking good care of yourself with a starch-based diet. It doesn't. Anyway. Well, everyone can submit questions for next week. If we, while Dr. McDougall was talking, you had a question that we didn't answer, send it to yeah. webinar at drmcdougall.com and someone will collect the questions and Passing on to us, and and if you don't get the newsletter, or you know this this video is being passed on to friends and relatives, mm -hmm. and you want to get the newsletter, it's free, no gimmicks. It's from my website, yeah. www.drmcdougall.com. The only thing that's advertised from us are McDougall things, right? And we don't <clears throat> advertise uh, uh, non-stick aluminum pots and pans or mm -hmm. this special treatment I'm going to be talking or about. Or deodorant. Or do we don't advertise anything. Yeah, about Google deodorant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, you know, they, people are going to look back and they're going to say, see, because I've seen people uh, sell out uh, very honest folks like, for example, Nathan oh, Pritikin. Yes, yes. The things that are recommended by the Pritikin program since he died would make Nathan roll over in his grave. Mm -hmm. and he was a kind man. And so, you know, uh, anyway, I don't yeah. know where we're going. Let's not talk about it. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Magdula, you, your message hasn't changed for 50 years. You do, you provide us with research and, and studies and um, your books, uh, and you're consistent, and you yeah, tell the truth. And, like and, it is. And, the, and the thing I want to add, which is heartening to me, you know, a lot of people say, how can you take this abuse of people saying all these things behind your back? Excuse me, I, I you know, I can find in modern day, media. Uh, more and more people discovering uh, my point of view, which is an old point of view. It goes back thousands of years. But more and more people, and they published in, in the press, but of course, media has more money, or excuse me, uh, big business has more money. So they get uh, relevant, relevant uh, associated or you know, media to take and print their, their side of the story, mm -hmm. which keeps their business running. All right. All right, Gustavo. Well, Gustavo, I just can't thank you enough for how oh, much you helped oh, us. Thank you. Thank you. We're all appreciative. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. And we look forward to that wonderful newsletter. Pass it on, everybody, to your family and friends. And uh, yeah, you, can, you can sign up for it at drmcdougall.com. Right. That's where right. I was going, probably. Exactly. Exactly. And tell them about the webinar next week. We should have thousands of people logging in. This is very important that we know this information. I, I hope so. And thank you, folks. And, of course, uh, the webinars are downloaded to my website free. You can link them, send them, et cetera. Uh, no gimmicks. And we always offer challenges, too. Uh, you may think that these uh, emails that are sent to webinar at drmcdougall.com, we just throw out the ones uh, that uh, – that don't favor our point of view. Well, that's not true. We're a very welcoming to points of view that uh, that are different than ours. Mm -hmm. But uh, they need to at least be 
people with, you know, some credibility. Oh, we get a lot of, I get a lot of newsletters from, or a lot of emails from people that uh, uh, really have little basis for what they believe. Yeah. But we're, we're happy to entertain other, other, other points of view. So don't think we're not. Hey, if you ever find us uh, with that kind of prejudice, uh, please bring it to our attention. Yes. All right. Uh, Very good. We should have the link up for the registration for that webinar in a couple of days. Okay. So everybody remember to go to drmcdougals.com because there is where you get to watch the old, you know, the past webinars and you can sign up for the new ones. And the newsletters are all published there. And the there newsletters and are there, yes. That's and it's right. all free and, and it's no gimmicks. Right. Well, thank you again. Dr. That was Michael. pleasure. I hope you have a great weekend. Goodbye, you everyone. Too. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.